me, your host, Sean Lynn, in the pub for a dram with friends where we talk about faith, family, food, and fun. Pull up a chair and I'll pour you a drink. Episode 10. We sit down with our new friend Santiago Torres, who's following God's call in his life. Sit down and we'll pour you a dram and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of A Dram with Friends. We are very excited to have Santiago joining us from Lethbridge, Alberta. He's a new seminarian in the Diocese of Calgary. Welcome. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for having me. So how'd you end up in Lethbridge? Well, as you said, I am a seminarian. I've been uh, studying for the diocese for five years. And halfway through our theology, uh, when we're going through theology, we have to do what's called an internship year. And so we're basically sent to a parish in the diocese uh, to live with the priests, be at the parish, and just kind of learn and to experience the life of the parish from from the inside, you would say, I think. Oh, that sounds sounds like fun. And you're you're getting used to the wind down there, I take it. And uh... Yeah. Yeah, actually the weather hasn't been too bad. The the summer we had a really good summer. It was well, I mean, compared to what it, what I was used to in Calgary, it was really not nice and hot. And then the winter, it snowed last week, but it hasn't been all that bad. The wind well, is starting to pick up, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it continues to go. Well, this show is called A Dram with Friends. So I picked up a bottle of Delmore 12 uh, a week or two ago, so I thought I'd have that. And my understanding is... Uh, Soon to be venerable Peter Van Uden uh, dropped off a whiskey for you. Is is that true? Yes, he did very nicely. He uh, he dropped off a, a bottle here of a uh, single malt single malt Scotch whiskey, the Glen Livet, fifteen years. So Ooh, uh, well, you'll have to thank let you us to know. Peter. Thank you to well, Peter. Yeah, you'll have to let us know what that tastes like. So a dram is only actually an eighth of an ounce, so it's not a lot of whiskey. <laughs> It's he actually just, dropped off a glass for me as well. So there you go. <laughs> just so that, just to make sure that I have the right amount. Oh, okay, good, good for him. He's uh, looking after the seminarian in Lethbridge, and that's, that's what right. we need. Is uh, we need men to to help look after men, uh, so that we can grow in in faith and 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 follow Christ. So I'm glad that. Uh, one of our team members, Peter Van Uden, is able to, to help accomplish that goal. Yes, yes, he did very nicely. So who is Santiago? Oh boy, um, Santiago is, first and foremost, I think uh, right now a seminarian trying to follow God's will, God's call for his life. Um, and, and very happy doing so. Uh, when I entered the seminary five years ago, it was, uh, it was a bit of a struggle to hear the call and then have to make the decision to, you know, to jump in. Um, but five years down the road, uh, I think Santiago is uh, very happy following the Lord. And what five years ago seemed like a very uh, scary idea. So from that accent, I'm guessing probably not native Calgarian. No, what, no. Where, what, where did you grow up? How, how were you? Uh, hi, hi, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Colombia. I was born in Colombia. And uh, I lived there until I was 16 years old. And at that time, um, my parents decided that uh, we were moving to Canada and uh, we arrived in Lethbridge in, sorry, we arrived in Calgary um, in 2005. Yeah. And what, so you were 16. So what high school did you go to? 
I went to Bishop O'Bird. I I arrived actually in at the beginning of October, so 15 years ago, not not that long ago this this month. And uh, I started went into grade 10 right away at Bishop O'Bird. I know it's no St. Francis where I'm currently the SRO, but I guess there's there's always second place. I'm glad that you you landed in Bishop O'Burn. Yeah. Uh, do you have fond memories there? Yeah, it was a good school. It was a good school. You know, uh, I think that those first three years were are kind of a blur right now. Like uh, arriving at 16 to a new country and being thrown into a huge high school, uh, knowing a bit of the language, but not really like fluent in it. And, uh, and that age is, is a tough age. So those three years were, were kind of rough on me, but not just like, it wasn't anything to do with the high school. It was just kind of like the, the new place. Right. But, uh, yeah, I had, I had fun memories of my high school. I right away started to get involved with sports. I love sports. So, got into the soccer team right away and uh, also played some volleyball and yeah, it was, it was a good time. Oh, I, I, I'm glad. Uh, yeah. That would be extremely hard to, to go to a new country, new language. And I'm guessing Colombia doesn't get quite as cold as we do in the winter. And uh, so nope. it, it would have been uh, a bit of a culture shock as they say. It was, it was, um, yeah. So when did you first feel the call to the seminary? Uh, well, when I was halfway through high school, I started to get more involved with my faith. Um, for a long time, I hadn't been. And as I grew in my faith and I started to get involved, then I went to UFC and I started to get involved with um, CCO, uh, the UCCC, kind of like the young adult community in Calgary. And I started to get more and more involved and grow more and more in my faith. And I think throughout those years and, and through friendships, and uh, I, I feel that sometimes like that thought would come up, but I was never, I never really paid attention to it um, until I was finishing my my university degree um all of a sudden i was uh starting to kind of hang out with this girl kind of more seriously started to think about now i'm graduating and trying to see where life was going to take me and uh and i think the fact that i was kind of starting to to maybe think about pursuing this girl in a more serious manner um then at a retreat we were a retreat uh with the uccc there on february in my last year of university and the thought popped up in my head again and whereas before i had always kind of just like put it away and uh it, it had never really been very strong that that one time at that retreat in front of the blessed sacrament um like I really felt that I needed to to really take that invitation seriously, and I think part of it was precisely because I was starting to to think about this relationship in a in a serious way with with this girl. So that was I think that was the first time, maybe not the first time that I heard it, but the first time that I actually took it seriously and actually said to myself, I need to look into this. And so what were you studying in university prior to this call? Yeah, I went to, uh, I went to UFC for uh, mechanical engineering. And um, so I graduated from that from, from UFC. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. And then uh, you're, you're feel this call. How you bring up uh, CCO and, and the young adults, community at U of C, how important is it for young people to, to belong to something like that? I, I think it's huge. I think it's huge. Uh, there's very few people I know that at that age are able to live out their faith devoutly and, and grow in it if they're not surrounded by, by a strong community, 
Uh, I think in today's world, it's very hard for a young person to, yeah, to, to really live out their relationship with God if they're not have that support of a, of a community that is, that is the same age that are going maybe that are maybe kind of like in the same time of life going through university and this kind of thing. And, and that are excited and on fire for, for, for the Lord. Uh, I think that can also happen in family. Uh, I know like very strong families that where, where the kids grow up in a very good environment for, for growing in their faith. Um, but I do think that some sort of fellowship, some sort of community and, uh, and in Calgary, there's a really good young adults community. I think uh, that provides that support for, for young people to, to not be afraid to live their faith and, and to, uh, and to just make it normal to, to be in love with God and, and to pursue him. So if a young person is watching this right now and saying, I would like to get involved. How, how, how do they take that first step? How do they, if you're in the diocese of Calgary or elsewhere, what's, what's a good first step for them? Uh, well, I guess like if, if they're in the university, I'd say check out the, the, uh, I know, I think there's, there's a St. Francis Xavier chaplaincy club, uh, and there's also CCO. Uh, so there, there's clubs at the university of, of Catholic young people. Uh, and there's events that at least when I was in university, and I think even more so now there's always events going on in, in a very strong community. Uh, if they're not at the university, I'd say um, talk to your parish priest or, or I'm sure like they can get you in touch with, with people. Uh, if not, you can also go to the St. Francis Xavier community, I think operates out of St. Bernard's, uh, which is in the north. West, yeah, West it's uh, the city. Yeah, it's not too far from uh, the university, and it's a great community. Yeah, uh, Father Cristino's working with them, and he's yeah, your, he's also helping you, right? As the yeah, vocation. he's the vocation director, so he's my boss. <laughs> uh, I don't. How does that work? Isn't the bishop the boss, or he is the boss? Um, <laughs> yeah, Father Cristino's like the. I don't know. Like the, event manager? Don't know. Well, but he's also, he's also, I think for, for a lot of the seminarians, I think they would share that in, in, in our, in our diocese. Like he's, he's very much like a father figure. Like he was, uh, he was very instrumental in, in my own discernment uh, with his support and, and encouragement. And so, and I think that's the case for, for some of the other men in the sermon right now. So uh, yeah, I guess he's more than a boss. I'll say that way. <laughs> that that's good to hear. I'm sure he'll appreciate when he watches this and shares it <laughs> a million times, so that uh, we can get some traction with our show. Yeah. And God Squad, uh, over the years, we've actually supported quite a bit the CCO initiatives uh, and yeah. Father Cristino and the St. Francis Xavier. We've done barbecues. Uh, yes. So we've uh, we're in full support and and know that the the men of the diocese are an untapped resource as a young future priest that uh you can you can call on to help you reach those young people so yeah yeah there's i i think i think uh I think in our diocese, we're very blessed with the many, I mean, you were asking like what a young person could do to get involved. I think there's many, many uh, resources, many, many ways of getting involved. Like there's, there's all, uh, yeah. Like if, if you want to get involved, there's it's definitely a way I think to, to kind of get in touch with people and, and get, get going with, with growing a new faith and learning. And is there a timeline when uh, I'll start calling you father? Yeah, there is. There is a timeline. So the internship year that I'm on happens uh, halfway through the theology program, which is the last part of the seminary journey. And so after this year, I will have two years left of studies. Uh, and so I've been saying three years and three years from now, 
I'll be, God willing, I'll be ordained a priest. Uh, now getting into November, I'm starting to realize it's starting to get to be less than three years, but yeah, around that time. Well, we're, we're excited for you and uh, we're going to continue to support our seminarians any way we can, whether it's uh, take them out for a dram. Maybe we'll have to start a tradition uh, of hosting <laughs> a dram for seminarians just to encourage them. Yeah. Uh, so anything we can do as God Squad to support your ministries, let us know. Because, like I said, the the men are are ready and willing to to assist our priests and and vice versa. So yeah, I know many of the priests are huge supporters of the men's organizations. So yeah. No, and I think, and I think, like, like I was saying, like, like young priests and and also just like men's groups are uh, a really important way in which young men can can see what a Christian man looks like, what what it is to be a man following the Lord, uh, and I think that that can be very inspiring. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, I, I know that the the witness that that God was God squad gives to young men is is very important for sure. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so this most of my guests they have to think a little further back than you. Uh, Bishop Henry the other night uh, had to think way back. But uh, what advice do you give your eighteen year old self? Because uh, a lot of our young men struggle these days, just even knowing what a man is. Yeah. And uh, so what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? I'm sure that was just last year, but... Uh... <laughs> that was more than last year, but but yeah, definitely not as much as Bishop Henry would have been, would have had to think back. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, you know what? When I was 18 years old, I was getting through high school and uh, I was a very, I was like your, your kind of high school student that is very easygoing, kind of carefree. I went into engineering, like not really giving much thought of to what I wanted to do. Uh, and that's kind of like the way my, my young adult life kind of happened. Uh, and, and I say that because I think that what I would tell my 18 year old self would be not necessarily in terms of a career or anything, but I would tell him to, to stop and maybe reflect on what's important uh, in life. What, what you, what you really want. Uh, I'm reminded right now of a, uh, a uh, pastoral letter that Archbishop Richard Smith from Edmonton um, put out, I think a couple of years ago. And the main, the main message there, I think was he would, ask, his question was, who are you listening to? Um, the idea behind it being that we're always in the way that we lead, lead our life, especially in this age, we're always kind of like being influenced by very many different ways different many directions, especially young people right now uh, with the media. And uh, so his question was, who are you listening to? And, and I think that I would tell my 18 year old self to ask himself that question. Who, who are you listening to? Who are you following? Who are you trying to, to become? Who are you? Cause I think at that age, like I was, I wanted to, I don't know, to be, to have friends, to do well in sports. I was, uh, you know, so you're trying to, to, I think at that age, you're trying to please very many different opinions of, of who you should be, of what's going to bring you happiness and all this. Um, and our Bishop Richard Smith, like the point was, was precisely that who you should be listening to is to the Lord because he's the one that, that has created us. He's the one that, knows what is going to make us happy. And I think what I would have told my, my 10 year old self is like, maybe stop and realize that in the way that you're leading your life and in the way that you're, um, 
acting and I don't know, uh, you're, you may be following, um, ways that are not going to bring you happiness. Um, so I, I would say that I would say like, um, yeah, like listen, listen to what it is that is influencing you and, and ask yourself whether that's really going to bring you to where you want to be. Uh, I think ultimately is the Lord that is going to provide the answer of, of really what it is that you want. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, it, that's very interesting. We're leading the, the search right now at our parish. It's a, a new show where there's seven episodes and it's featured on heroic men, which this show will yeah. be on as well. And, uh, it, it really is just asking those questions in a meaningful way. The, they start off, I find very interesting, where they talk about your tombstone and the dates. And they, they said, but nobody ever focuses on the dash. And what is the dash in between those dates? And, and so to get people thinking about it, I, I highly recommend it. It's uh, been extremely well done uh well presented and i think it's going to be a game changer for our young people uh mm -hmm. so if you're looking for something to lead uh, your your parishioners down there consider doing the search i've got extra study guides if you need okay <laughs> and uh so so uh, have you had time to assess your whiskey yet uh it's very good it's very yeah. good. I'm not. I'm not too much of a of a whiskey connoisseur or anything, but but it's very good. Okay, good. So Peter has Father, good taste. Father Kevin maybe can help you uh, assess that later as well, because uh, sure that's his job is to help you understand the the workings <laughs> of being a priest, right? So right, that's right. He does and a good that, job of that. Oh, good, good. So I don't know if you know this, but. Uh, Whiskey in Gaelic, the, the original word is ishkabaha, which means water of life. And oh. uh, my prayer is that your ministry will lead many to the true water of life in this life. And uh, I, I pray that you touch many lives and hearts in your ministry and know that you will be supported every step of the way. Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, that's actually great. I didn't know that's what it meant. That's great. <laughs> well, you learn something new every day. See, yeah, using, whis you do. using whiskey for theology, you can use that for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I will. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And this has been another episode of A Dram with Friends. Uh, please like the video. Subscribe to our channel. Check us out on heroicmen.com and tell a friend, share it. We, we appreciate all you can do and God loves you and has an amazing plan for you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have any suggestions or questions, email a dram at godsquad.ca or go to godsquad.ca to support and donate.